going to show you how to make LPR plates to grow your coli on. You'll have to weigh out the desired amount of tryptone, yeast extract, sodium chloride, and agar. Here we're making the easiest possible LB agar that you can make. Um, so we're just going to weigh these things out. I'm going to add them to a flask. I'm going to make 200 milliliters of um, LB agar. I'm going to just pour that into the flask. Now if we want it to be more exact, we would add all of these things to a beaker, dissolve them, bring them to volume. Uh, but here what we're going to do is just make this directly in the flask because it works good enough for, uh, for making agar plates. I have 200 milliliters of uh, ultra pure water. I'm going to use to rinse these weighing boats out into the Erlenmeyer flask a few times. This way we get all of our uh, all of our media into the flask. You could also weigh these. Um, these components directly into the flask by putting the, the flask on the balance and uh, zeroing it. However, if you overshoot, you won't be able to uh, correct overshooting very easily. Like you put too much on, too much of one thing on there. So we're not bringing this to volume. So we'll probably end up with just ever so slightly over 200 milliliters because we have the volume of these, um, these solutes plus, uh, plus the water. It doesn't matter for LB broth. Then we have to cover this with aluminum foil. mouth of that Erlenmeyer flask with the shiny side of the aluminum foil. You also note that I made 200 milliliters of LB broth in a 500 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask so that it doesn't boil out of the flask in the autoclaving process. Now we'll take this down to give it an autoclave and sterilize it. After autoclaving, to give your flask a good swirl like this, while it all looks homogeneous, there's often going to be a layer of agar on the bottom. Um, and we want to get the agar mixed uh, very well with the rest of the media. Now we're going to do, we're going to rapidly cool this down. We have to cool it down to about 55 degrees or so um, before we can add our antibiotics. To do that, we're going to put it in a an ice in a an ice bucket without ice. And we're going to add cold water. So that the water is at the level uh, of the agar, which you can see here. And we're going to set our timer for exactly uh, three minutes. With that amount of cold water, um, you won't have a, and three minutes, you'll have um, roughly the perfect temperature for adding antibiotics and pour in your plates. I want to just point out a couple things. So, 
you notice that I didn't pH the um, LB agar. I found that that's not necessary. The E. coli grows, grows really nicely without doing that, and that saves some time. And I also want to point out that you can buy LB agar powder um, that has everything in it already, and that makes it a little bit easier. You only have one thing to weigh out instead of four things to weigh out. Desirable to gently swirl your LB agar a couple, two to three times during that three minutes. Our timer is done. At this point, when you feel when you feel your LB agar, you should be able to hold it. It should be quite warm, so that you don't want it. We don't want it to solidify while it's still in the flask. Um, but it but it shouldn't be so hot that it burns you. Now we have 200 microliters. I mean, 200 milliliters of LB agar. So I'm going to add 200 microliters, 1,000x canamycin. I'm making LB um, canamycin. You could have whatever antibiotic you need for your experiments. And actually before I start that, I'm going to start our burner. The burner will create an upwards air draft to um, help blow like dust particles and other possible contaminants upward and not into your um, solution that you like to be sterile. We're also trying very hard not to make too many bubbles here in this LB agar. So I've added the antibiotics, so I'm going to swirl gently. If we make a lot of bubbles, we're going to have some bubbles in our plates. And I do have a way of popping those bubbles that I can show you. And things will be smoother. If so that's fairly well mixed. You need approximately 20 milliliters of LB agar per plate. I usually pour my plates just a little bit less than 20 mil, so I'm going to try to get I'm going to try to get 12 plates here. What you want to do is you want to stack up your plates um, three or four high in nice neat stacks. And the technique that we're going to do is we're going to lift and pour, and then lift and pour the next one. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm not going to fill the plate completely, as you can see there. I'm going to leave a little bit unfilled. Just like I said, I'm trying to get 12 plates here. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just gently rock the plates like this. You'll notice that now it, the LB agar is spread all over the, um, the plate. Keep this for this thing. We don't want to tip our Erlenmeyer flask back like up to the upright position if possible. We like to keep it almost to the port position so that we don't have uh, uh, droplets of agar falling all over the place. I'm not really getting any bubbles in these plates because I didn't have too many bubbles in my flask. Let's see that I actually got very easily get. Um, 12 plates, probably could even got 13 plates. And so the trick, the trick if you did have a bubble on the plate, we don't like to have bubbles in the plate because they'll form little holes in the plate. The trick is you take your burner and you just briefly go like this and all the bubbles will pop. Just do that, and there were bubbles there. The bubbles will pop. All right, I'll come back when once these things are solidified. One thing we need to do is we need to clean out our Erlenmeyer flask right away after we pour our plates. We don't want agar to um, gel too hard inside of here. Um, once the agar is gelled and dries, it can be hard to clean out this flask. So the best thing to do is to immediately rinse this thing out with some hot water, and then the cleaning will be. Our LB plates are now solidified. You can tell that they're solidified because they've gone from being clear 
to being a, kind of a tra hazy, translucent color where you can't see through them as well. I should also point out that while after you pour the plates in their liquid, it's really important to not move the plates until they until they solidify. So here was what I mean. The plate is the plate is no longer very clear, and you can see the agar is not um, falling out of the plate. It's completely solid. We want to store these plates at room temperature for one day to dry out a little bit, and then we'll put them in a plastic um, in a sealed plastic bag. Um, at four degrees and they can be used stored for approximately a month. They'll um, continue working for about a month. Alright, that's it. You have LB agar plates. Thank you for watching.